Within the first 48 hours of the shooting at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School, the first conspiracies emerged. David Hogg and Emma Gonzalez? Well, they weren't really students at the school. They were so-called crisis actors who traveled the country showing up at shootings to demand stricter gun control. Even after that was debunked, an aide to Florida State Representative Sean Harrison sent a Tampa Bay Times reporter this email saying, both kids in the picture are not students, but actors that travel to various crises when they happen. When the Tampa Bay Times wrote a story about the email, the aide was fired. But you have to wonder if he was fired for spreading the lie or just getting caught. Then came stories that Hogg, whose father is a retired FBI agent, was really part of some deep state anti-Trump conspiracy who was being fed lines to stay on TV. That site also tried to push the story that shooter Nicholas Cruz was a registered Democrat. You can imagine one of the reasons why they wanted to push that false story was because Cruz was pictured wearing a Make America Great Again hat. And there was this. The picture of Emma Gonzalez you see there on the right tearing up the Constitution. It immediately went viral. For those on the right, it proved she didn't believe in what America stands for. The only problem, it was fake. It came out of a photo shoot with Teen Vogue. Here is the actual video. Emma, joined by some of her fellow Parkland students, was actually tearing up a target used at a gun range. So what is happening here? Joining me this morning is Mark Caputo from Politico, who has been documenting these instances and uncovered yet another amazing hoax. Mark, welcome to you. I want to get to the story that in a moment, because that one is, is truly mind-blowing. <laughs> but I want to stay with these kids for a second, because I didn't even highlight two more recent incidents, one where Emma Gonzalez at the March for Our Lives rally was wearing a Cuban flag patch, which Congressman Stephen King immediately assumed meant she must be some communist sympathizer. In fact, she's just a proud Cuban American who had the flag on her on her jacket. And the other, David Hogg recently mentioned to TMZ that a couple of schools in California had turned him down. And this became a huge story with Laura Ingram mocking him on Twitter. Yeah, Laura, Laura Ingram was like the mean girl in the cafeteria and decides to attack a high school kid. Turns out he's more of an adult than she is. So what's going on here? I think what you're really seeing ultimately is the dangers of confirmation bias and a modern media landscape where we have democratized news information and gathering and dissemination. And therefore, a completely fake news website like Gateway Pundit can cater and pander to people who want to read the stories that they believe, even if they're really absurd and not believable to the average, say, educated person, especially when compared to, say, the New York Times. But nevertheless, this thrives in this environment, and you can now have, to perversely misquote the old saying, your own facts. You can now find facts that justify your worldview, even if they're not true. Because this, the irony, of course, is that the right likes to spread the narrative of fake news, that if stories they don't like are just fake news, the Washington Post, the New York Times, Politico, CBS, fake news, when in fact, they seem to be the biggest promoters of fake news. Yeah, it, I think they're simultaneously, they're, they're like crackheads and crack addicts. They can't stop slinging it and they can't stop doing it. Yet, they're the ones who have the problem, we don't. Does it also suggest a sense of desperation? Do you think that in some way, the kids are winning this debate in a way that makes them nervous? Maybe in a PR, uh, public relations standpoint, yes, but I've been kind of you know, trained, raised, and bred as a legislative reporter, as a policy reporter, as well as a political one. You'd, I don't see, at least at this moment, any real major legislative chances of the major types of gun reform that the kids are calling for. Well, but you have to admit, you'll, give, you'll grant the kids this much. Six months ago, you never would have envisioned the type of laws being passed out of Tallahassee getting through, would you? Oh, no, don't get me wrong. The, the public relations tide has turned. Now, the question is, is will the legislative tide turn? We're going to see. It has turned a little, or maybe we're at slack tide, but uh, it, it is yet to be seen. My guess is the only way to get a real assault weapons ban, if that's going to be possible, will be through a constitutional Amendment. Well, there was a really horrific thing that a friend of mine, a longtime Republican consultant, had told me privately. He said the reality is the number one threat to the Second Amendment, he's a conservative, he's a Republican, understand, he said, is not the media, 
it's not liberal activists, it's school shootings. And unfortunately, he said more of these are going to happen. All right. I want to turn to your story because that's what made me want to do this piece to begin with was, was and I just want to set up a little bit and then just turn it over to you to describe. Obviously, one of the characters that emerged from this entire event at Parkland was Sheriff Scott Israel and his appearance on CNN taking on the NRA. That made him an instant target for the NRA to come after as hard as they could. And certainly, Scott Israel has made him so vulnerable as a target, but they almost went a bridge too far by starting to spread a lie about Scott Israel that he had been accused of raping a 17-year-old and forcing her to have an abortion. And suddenly people were spreading this all over the country. But you got to the truth of it. And talk to me about that. Right. Well, actually, it was that website again, Gateway Pundit. They, they released these series of three videos. They featured one of them that were cut in the 2012 campaign when Scott Israel successfully ran for sheriff against incumbent Al Lamberti. And in that, there were three, three videos cut. There was a woman, quite obviously an actress, someone hired to say what she was saying, looking direct to camera and giving these messages like, hey, Scott, you know you impregnated me and I had to have an abortion, and on and on and on. Well, in 2000- And these were just uploaded onto YouTube. Right, and it was like, I think October 26th of 2012 was when it was done, right before the election. It was clearly a campaign-related matter, a dirty trick, and. I think if you had a lick of common sense, it certainly looked fake. Anyway, that disappeared, but then it reappeared because Scott Israel became kind of, in pro wrestling terms, the heel for uh, the, the, the conservative movement to hate. So how did you find her? Well, what I did is, is when Gateway Pundit posted this, I said, look at the irony here. The, the far right is always talking about crisis actors and people paid to spread lies after a crisis. And it's quite clearly this woman is paid to say these things and it's not believable. And a follower of mine on Twitter reached out to me after I had researched and found and posted a variety of videos the woman did, not just talking about how Scott Israel had impregnated her and had her forced her to have an abortion. Which was not true. Correct. Uh, she was also hawking cell phone plans, diet plans, miracle weight loss, things like she used different names. I mean, if you had done a little bit of research, you would have found, like, this stuff is crazy. This woman is paid to say whatever the person paying her wants her to say. And so someone saw this, contacted me privately said, hey, I think this is X and Y who went to school with me. I then contacted her. Uh, to her credit, she's utterly uninformed. Uh, she didn't even remember this because she said she made thousands of testimonial videos. She was horrified. She got a lawyer. She's contacted YouTube to try to get him pulled down. But unfortunately, YouTube, at least as of last checking, refused to. So, and that video of her giving this horrible testimonial against Scott Israel had more than like 200,000 hits, right? I can't remember the exact number. I think, that, I think that's the number right, that you would probably. If you would total them up, it, it was about that. And, and like, oh, at least when you come to the comments, at least 97% of them, 99% of them came after February 14th. And they of wanted to believe it. They wanted to believe the worst about Scott, Scott Israel. Right. Now, you wrote a story. Now, I'll give you, let's give you credit. How many, how many hits did your story end up getting? Two million. Two so, million yeah, hits. I, I, which I was kind of astounded by. But yeah, so people actually got to see. What, what, what we did is we used this story as a way to get into this, this larger phenomenon of, you know, Florida is not only is the United States fertile ground for conspiracy theories and false ones after a disaster. Florida seems to be particularly fertile ground for it. There was an FAU professor who had been teaching that the Sandy Hook I remember. families were hoaxes. He got fired. Yeah, but he was from Florida Atlantic. There was a woman who lived in the Tampa Bay region who threatened a father of one of the Sandy Hook victims who had since moved to Palm Beach Gardens or Palm Beach County and, and said he was a, a phony and his kid had never been killed. So this is just wonderful, crazy Florida. So again, we're going to come back and talk more politics, but I think the lesson to take away from this is know the source of your information. You may not like the Washington Post, the New York Times, CNN, CBS, political, but at least you know where to reach them and how to talk to them and what their background is. A lot of this stuff that gets posted, nobody knows where it's from. Yeah, and a lot of these people who claim that we are, we are the ideologically motivated ones with bias are in, in fact themselves the one who suffer from that. You know, this being Easter Sunday, let's remember what Pontius Pilate famously said, what is truth? <laughs> All right. Well, let's, let's, let's take a break here. We'll pick up. Let's talk about some of the political races coming up. We'll do that with Mark Caputo when we come back.